first up of the Atlantic Go Through, I want to somehow talk about them, but about themselves um, and about the devices and products in their clinic. Oh, right, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Sonji. Uh, I guess you guys know me. Um, I've been working with Aconia lasers since 2019. 20, no, no, 2021. 2021, yeah, just after COVID. July, August, yeah, absolutely. So, and obviously, I've seen the journey grow from a couple of devices to pretty much nationwide now, which is fantastic. Um, and also one of the first to get the MOD uh, device uh, in my clinics, which primarily, you know, the focus at that time was uh, the FDA clearance for fat reduction, um, so particularly in obese patients. And that was the first reason why we brought, brought it to the clinic, because we were looking at data, looking at things like cryolipolysis and possible side effects that can happen from that, that later on came to more media scrutiny. Um, and we wanted something that was safe and effective for our patients, that was proven. So what initially drew me was the clinical data. So not only just treating 10 patients, but the study design. So the double-blinded randomized controlled trials across many centers. So there was limited bias um, when you looked at these studies and that you don't normally see generally within aesthetic medicine. And then looking a little bit deeper at low-level laser technology, um, I started very quickly calling the emerald laser wellness laser. Um, and truly, it was, in my view, the first wellness laser device. And that, those clinical studies, that research looking at low-level laser, have been known about for a very long time. Um, we, for those of you that look at electron microscopy and know certain scientists that have won Nobel Prizes, like the Bohr effect, for instance, elevating those electrons to a higher level. That's been out for a really long time. So photochemistry is what we're talking about um, and what we really should be talking about today. And that equates to wellness. So um, I'm privileged to be here at Dr. Neiman's clinic um, because I think that when people seek aesthetic treatments, they're seeking to feel better about themselves and they, feel, they seek to improve their wellness. And that's what we really should be doing to Certain other wavelengths um, that have been used to reduce fat can actually be destructive. So as doctors, we should really do no harm. And actually for years, we probably have been doing that. So my practice has changed dramatically since 2021, looking at these data, and I'm happy to discuss a lot of these studies with you guys. Um, and I think it's the future, um, and the future's a really good. Hello. <laughs> so for those of you who have not met before, I'm Dr. Nicola Conlon and um, I'm not an aesthetic practitioner. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a scientist um, and I specialize in cellular aging. So what is it that actually goes on inside of our bodies at the cellular level to cause everything that we're essentially, you know, looking at at the surface and feeling on the inside? And my background is actually in drug development um, developing drugs that are designed to slow the cellular aging process. But I think there's a huge overlap with the sort of longevity space that I'm from and the aesthetic space here, because all of the science and everything that we're really learning and understanding about the aging process at the cellular level in the, the sort of scientific experiments and lab stage is massively going to change the future of aesthetics and wellness and how we implement the types of you know, technologies that we'll be using. Um, and I'm always really excited when I come across devices or treatments that are actually looking at targeting the root cellular causes of, of aging. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the emerald laser is doing exactly that. It is looking at the cellular level and how we can improve cellular health. Um, so, so me, for my role, is not having patients or performing any of the procedures like these guys. It's actually understanding the science behind it and explaining the science and explaining like why this is relevant and why this is the future. Brilliant. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Nima. I'm originally a dentist, graduating from the University of Bristol Dental School in 2013. I then very quickly immersed myself into the field of medical aesthetics where I became the director of Dr. Nima Clinics and this newly founded space for MD London. 
And for a long time, just like with most of the people in the medical aesthetic industry, I was focusing on the external attributes of an individual uh, without you know, very little consideration of what actually goes on on the inside. And it was during lockdown in 2020 where I kind of took a step back from work and realized you know, what actually is my purpose. And I realized that my purpose wasn't just dealing with one's external attributes. It was trying to you know, nurture the different dimensions of wellness. And we have the physical, the emotional, the social, the spiritual and intellectual. And this is where the idea of remedy came to mind, um, a sanctuary whereby we can nurture all these different dimensions of wellness. And when you do, you, you, you know, you're providing our patients with the tools to be able to live their most fulfilled life. And a couple of years down the line, here we are um, at Remedy. We do everything from biohacking. Um, you know, I wasn't going to get a fat reduction device for my clinic, ultimately because I've worked with a few in the past and the long term results have been less than satisfactory. Uh, but when I just saw the Emerald Laser, I literally put my card down and I was like, here you go, because it's not just the fat reduction aspect of it, which, you know, which most people, let's be honest, come for. But it's when we educate them on what it's actually doing inside our bodies on a cellular level, you know, the increase in energy, the reduction in inflammation. Uh, it's not just a fat reduction laser. And, you know, during our consultations, we kind of hit home, hit hard on that one. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, thank you. So this is our Neuroglow and Cellular Reboot panel. Welcome. Um, so we're <coughs> going the world of longevity, optimizing health span and cellular health through the power of non-thermal lasers, such as Emerald Laser and Uchido. Um, with our insightful panel, we'll delve into the fascinating realm of extending your lifespan and aging process, enhancing your health and optimizing performance. So we're going to explore the protocols and strategies to unlock the secrets to a healthier, longer life. Um, but we, before we talk about the Chido and Emerald in depth a little bit more, we're going to delve into um, understanding the importance of longevity and what that is, and grasp the fundamentals of it. <coughs> um, so, Nicola, mm. could you um, tell us a little bit more about what telomeres are and how these affect the aging process? Yeah, so I think like one tiny step before that is just like to really understand that what what is changed in the science to make us now believe that you know we can actually reverse the aging process at a cellular level, and really the sort of the, the pinnacle change within the longevity industry is that we now understand that there are essentially twelve things that are going wrong within our cells that drive the entire aging process. And these have become famously known as the hallmarks of aging, the 12 hallmarks of aging. And the whole focus of the longevity space is how can we target these hallmarks? Because these hallmarks will either speed up the aging process or they'll slow down the aging process. So when you talk about telomeres, mm. that is one of the hallmarks of aging. And yeah. um, the fact that our telomeres shorten as we get older. So what telomeres are is they're little protective caps on the end of our, our DNA essentially and um, I always compare them to like the little plastic bits on the end of your shoelaces they basically protect your DNA from fraying and unraveling now every time a cell divides um, or every, any time there's damage that needs to be repaired these little telomeres get a little bit shorter every time and they're getting you know it's just chipping away at them to the point where there is no telomere left and that means that cell cannot exist anymore so telomeres are one of the hallmarks of aging because as they get shorter, this is a problem because our cells cannot regenerate after that. And then are you able to tell us a little bit more about epigenetic alterations? Yeah, so, so this is another hallmark of aging. Um, and I guess these, these ones that you're asking are probably the most famous, the ones that yeah. many people do, you know, have started to hear about. Um, so when we talk about epigenetics, this is again like a buzzword that you guys are going to start hearing so much more about. And if you think about um, every cell in your body, it's, it's got the same set of DNA. So it doesn't matter whether it's a skin cell, a liver cell or a brain cell, it has exactly the same DNA. So then the question is, okay, if every cell's got the same DNA, then how does a skin cell become a skin cell and a brain cell become a neuron, <laughs> which is very, very different. And that's what epigenetics is. Epigenetics is a process whereby your genes are literally tagged with little stickers almost that says, in this cell, you're gonna become a skin cell, so switch these genes on. This is gonna become a brain cell, so switch these genes on. Um, and that is the process of epigenetics. It's, it's switching on different patterns of genes in our cells. Now, where it links to the aging process is if I was to take a sample of your cells 
um, and look at the pattern of genes switched on, it would look very, very different to the pattern of a, an 80 year old or a 90 year old. They would have a different set of genes switched on. Yours would be a much younger set of genes. There would be genes that are helping with repair and keeping the cell in good health. An older person, those genes are switched off. And this is called epigenetic drift. We see this drift from this young sort of pattern to an old pattern. And that is a hallmark of age in this change towards this older pattern of gene expression. That was very well, um, what you call it, not pronounced, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, I guess that brings us to, and I'm going to um, get this wrong, seen sense cells and how they affect the body. Yes. Senescence. Senescence. Yes. There we go, thank it's, you. It's a bit of a tongue twister <laughs> one, isn't it? So senescence again. So my, you know, my prediction um, for the very near future is that senescence is going to be something that we're all hearing a lot more about. So senescent cells are effectively cells that have been shut down. So in, in every cell, we are constantly accumulating damage. So just sitting here, just by the process of breathing, by the UV, it's damaging our cells. And we've got an army of repair processes that are constantly just working away, making sure this damage is fixed um, and that it doesn't become a problem and we never even know it happened. But sometimes you get so much damage in your cell that basically the cell sets off an alarm bell saying, okay, this is a write off, we can't do anything, we need to close this cell down because it could become cancerous, it could become a troublesome cell. So senescence kicks in and it effectively means the cell's gone to sleep. So it doesn't get removed from the body, it just sits in the tissue asleep. Now, when we're young, this is good because it stops us from getting cancer and things like that. But we are now living like way longer. Yeah. We're living like into our 80s. And this means that by the time we're, you know, getting on, we've got a lot of these senescent cells that are accumulating in our tissues. And first of all, they're sitting there not doing the job. So this is why we get things like uh, organ failure, because, uh, you know, muscle wastage, why we're getting loss of skin elasticity, because all them cells are sitting there not doing what they're supposed to do. But the second even worse thing is we now know that they actually secrete a lot of inflammation. And we know that inflammation is also a, a hallmark of aging. It's a key driver of the aging process. So these cells are sit, literally sitting there spewing out loads of inflammation. That's then damaging other cells and making them senescent. And it kind of goes on like that. So the exciting thing is that it's been shown if you can just remove these cells and there are certain molecules and drugs that have been investigated for this, that you can massively reverse aging on a, on a whole body level because these cells, even if they're sitting in your skin, they're actually influencing the rest of the body because of the inflammation. So say that's what modern medicine is for you, is extending our lifespan. Um, it's a whole new world. Yeah. Another yeah. aspect for everyone over here, like how on an inner reverse, what are your thoughts on, well, what are scientific thoughts on the implication of stem cells and possibly mutagenic um, pathways that can happen as a result of treatment? In, in terms of using stem cells. Yeah. So I think this is why exosomes have become a lot more popular yeah. because, so stem cell. I don't know if you want to explain stem cells or... Well, yes, yeah, so stem cells are your precursor cells. So, I mean, they can find, be found in embryology as well as in adult human life. Um, but what I was referring to is that there's some initial, well, there are some clinical studies looking at the use of stem cells, uh, particularly within dermatology, within skin, that can propagate actually some form of cancer. Um, because of that process mm -hmm. that you've just talked about with senescence. So um, I think, you know, like you said, with exosomes, it's a lot more useful because you can get growth factor derived, well, growth factors derived from stem cells, and you can almost harness that power uh, with exosomal delivery. So, and I think that's safer, but I think it's just the use of stem cells in yeah. advertising is... It's everywhere. And it's that's, everywhere, um, and it's actually not true. Not yeah, and it's the stem, stem cell exhaustion is yeah. another hallmark of aging, which is why yeah. it's become a buzzword and why it's become so popular because these cells have the ability to turn into any cell in the body and replenish yeah. any damage. So the idea was like, okay, they're exhausted, so let's put some more back in. But these cells can become anything. So they can become a good cell, but they can also become oh, a bad, bad. cell. Yeah. So this is where exosomes comes in because what's been found is that actually the sort of rejuvenate, like the rejuvenation that stem cells seem to create is not by just the cell being there, but by all the factors that it gives off. 
So these exosomes are almost like little bubbles that almost come off the, off the stem cell, full of all these brilliant growth factors and healing factors and signaling factors that then do the work. So the idea with exosomes is don't put the yeah. stem cell in, just put the good bits in, put the, the, um, the exosomes in full of all the yeah. good signaling factors to avoid that issue. So yeah, I think particularly for media and press, that distinction is really important yeah. because I don't think it's actually explained a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of products are advertised as stem cell treatments um, and they're not necessarily uh, the case. So, um, and yeah, I mean the advent of exosomal um, delivery is fantastic and you can control that. So for example, some of you know that obviously I speak for calcium, which is in the lab they are stimulating those exosomes and then they're gathering them. So it's not actually stem cells, um, which I think is important distinction. So you hit the nail on the head, that was my next question. Oh, right. uh, so Nima, what about muscle, muscle mass um, preservation as well? Okay, so yeah, muscle mass preservation when it comes to longevity, vitality and overall health is actually very, very important. As we age, we get a gradual reduction in muscle mass and also muscle strength, which is known as sarcopenia. And what then happens is that you know, all of the daily activities that you generally do start to decline, you know, you get reduced mobility and you get increased risk of, you know, falls and fractures. Now, moreover, um, when it comes to muscle preservation, it's important because muscles um, are important for, you know, metabolic processes, you know, keeping your metabolic in, you know, in good health. And there are certain ways in which we, you know, we can maintain our muscle mass, not just maintain it, but improve it during the the aging process and by doing things such as uh, strength training, uh, resistance training, you know, daily if possible, uh, this will help with protein synthesis and also muscle protein synthesis, shall I say, and also uh, making sure that in your diet you are, you know, having relatively high levels of protein and yeah. by doing this, you know, you can increase your longevity long term. Amazing. And does your gut health also have to yeah, uh, absolutely. Gut health is probably one of the most important factors when it comes to, again, vitality and longevity. And our gut microbiota consists of trillions of microorganisms which are responsible for certain physiological processes, such as digestion, um, immune function, and also metabolic health. And any imbalances in our gut microbiota uh, has been linked to certain conditions such as obesity, um, diabetes and also other inflammatory conditions. Now the gut-brain uh, axis which is a bi-directional communication system between the gut and the brain is also essential when it comes to regulating mood um, and stress management um, and so what we need to do in our daily life is to incorporate certain habits such as a diet rich in uh, fiber, um, what else? Fiber. <laughs> like lots um, of different yeah, plants. Pre, pre, yeah, prebiotics, yeah. uh, fermented foods, but also managing our stress levels because it's very, very important. You know, sometimes when I'm stressed, my whole gut goes to... Uh, so are there any devices that can be used? Um, absolutely. Well not. Again, them? we're speaking about it today, the low-level laser therapy yeah. uh, has been used for certain inflammatory conditions such as I, you know, IBS, rheumatoid arthritis. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant lasers. Vagal nerve. Vagal nerve stimulation as well, 100%. Yeah. So the EDRL as well? EDRL, yeah. Vagal, um, looking at this. Got to bring that. Yeah. yeah. And then one last question from Renee before we move on to our non thermal lasers. What about your immune system? How does that play in longevity as well? Well, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty much in the name. I mean, it's protection. Yeah. So um, our immune system is, has memory, as we know, you know um, and that's really important. And I think it's extremely important if, when you're looking at things like your diet, as well as your general wellness, um, all feeds into your immune system. So if you have a good immune system, then you're going to have less environmental stress, less DNA damage as time goes by. Um, and yeah, it's your protection. Um, okay, so we're going to go into a little bit more about low level lasers, which is the emerald laser. So as the name suggests, it doesn't generate heat. Instead, it works by improving cellular function and stabilizing mitochondria, reducing inflammation and optimizing genetic expression. Um, so Manir, firstly, why did you bring the emerald laser into your clinic? How does it work? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, as you guys 
heard in, in the beginning, it was the I brought it in primarily as a fat reduction. Yeah. So, at that time. That was how many years ago? It was three or four, four wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's four years ago now. And, you know, the, the, the mechanism for emerald laser is preservation of the actual fat cell. So, the way that we see somebody that is obese is very different now. Someone that's over, overweight, the cells are the fat cell more sluggish. One thing I guess we didn't really speak so much about is the importance of fat as an organism. Mm. Um, it's responsible for a lot of the homeostatic mechanisms within our body and that translates to general energy levels, wellness, sexual function, hormonal function. All of these things are extremely important and we know this just from general going from childhood to adolescence that for example a female will reach a certain body weight and they'll start menstruating. So we know the importance of fat. And in adulthood, or even earlier with anorexia, you know, menses disappear. So having that right um, balance within fat as an organ within your body is extremely important for numerous uh, functions. The emerald laser um, is part of the visible spectrum um, of, of your photo spectrum. Okay? And only visible light, no, only visible low-level laser can make that photochemical reaction. Okay? And this photochemical reaction is, is essentially a, a reaction that happens in one cell that then gets transferred. So you get transfer of that energy mm -hmm. in, that, in those processes. And one of the main ways that emerald um, laser functions and photo, in these photochemical reactions is to um, in, increase ATP, which is your energy level, energy, well, your currency of energy within your body. And its main focus is on the mitochondria. So we know that, forget about being overweight, but in conditions like osteoarthritis, you've got a lower, your mitochondrial function is at a lower level. And that's proven in clinical studies. So use of different light, um, within different stages of that electron transfer can help with the end product, which is ATP. So you can essentially up-regulate your currency, so you get more energy. And that translates into practice, because if somebody is looking to lose weight, the emerald laser will shrink those fat cells, but also bring about a metabolic change and an increase in energy. So the patient is not just coming in just for fat reduction, they're going to leave with more energy for things like exercise to build more muscle to help actually stave off that fat loss that they have and increase their wealth. Yeah. Yeah. And Nina, why did you bring the um, laser into your clinic and what? what areas do you treat? Uh, similar to what I said in the beginning, for me it's always ever going to be a wellness device. And the way that I say to my clients, Simon, you're not going to like this. I don't sell it as a fat reduction device. I say it's a biohacking device. So biohacking is basically optimizing our cells so that they can operate at their most optimum. Um, so yeah, it's a biohacking device with a side effect of fat reduction and an increase in energy levels. Again, as Munir correctly said, um, usually in aesthetic medicine, we have procedures such as fat freezing, liposuction, which kill the fat cell. Um, and the latest research has shown that when you kill the fat cell, our body's actually quite clever. So it always wants to go in a state of what we know as homeostasis, which is its internal balance. So what then happens is that you've lost the fat, right? Your, your, you know, your brain then sends a signal to the body that, oh my God, I've lost this fat. So what does the body do? It starts creating more fat. And, it, and you may not lose the fat, you may not gain more fat in the area that you lost, let's say with cry, um, cryolipolysis, but the fat definitely comes back in other areas of the body. And this you know, research has shown this. And again, why are we demonizing fat cells? You know, fat is there for a reason. As Munir said, we need it for so many metabolic processes, immune function. What the emerald does, it allows those fat cells to operate at their most optimum by shrinking them. Um, and for me in my clinic, uh, as I said, I was never gonna get a fat reduction device because ultimately none of them, I don't wanna say none of them work, but they don't provide the best, uh, it's not the best option for our patients. And we need to start introducing wellness at that cellular level, uh, which the emerald laser does. And again, it's not just for fat reduction. You said reduction in inflammation, improvement in you know, cognition, brain function, etc. And you ask which areas do I treat? Basically everywhere. Like, I don't think there's one place, apart from breasts for ladies, but I don't think there's one place that we don't yeah. treat. Yeah. When cancer. you look at uh, clinical studies, looking at photochemical reactions, <coughs> generally the skin, uh, as well as the eyes, um, have the highest 
pick up rates in terms of that um, that photothermic reaction, that, you, that well, that photochemical reaction rather um, that you have. So, um, and I think it's also worth mentioning um, that thermal lasers are very different. So this is not a thermal laser, this is a cold laser. Thermal lasers are at the uh, other end of the spectrum and they can cause damage, which we know of now. So um, it's not to be con confused with thermal lasers, yeah. lasers that heat the skin. Amazing. And then for Stephen Air, um, what, um, what results can patients expect to see within the time scale? So some of the initial research that looked at the use of low-level lasers on fat reduction were lipoaspirate studies, which basically means that um, the laser was uh, fixed over the area, so the abdomen area, for instance, and then liposuction was performed. Yeah. And then the fat cells were looked at under a microscope. And what they found was that there was immediate uh, breakage of that, of that wall, so it's almost like a small pore within the cell wall. And the intracellular fat, the fat that's inside the cell, was outside. Yeah. And um, so you see this immediate change within 20 minutes. So, and that does translate to immediate sort of uh, reduction in second circumference, particularly in the abdomen. But then that obviously, because of the process that we talked about, the increase in metabolism, increase in ATP, that all then gets better over time. So generally, somebody's coming for sort of fat reduction in inverted commas, which obviously Lena's correctly said that that is almost a byproduct of, yeah. of increased wellness, then they'd probably normally have around six sessions weekly. Um, and it depends on the BMI. So if somebody is clinically obese, they may be on a course for even 20, 25 weeks. So, and we've seen some great see some of my before and afters back there on the poster, you see some great um, results from it. And I think what's also really um, useful for patients is that it's quick treatment. So to treat an entire abdomen, it takes 15 minutes uh, at the front, 15 minutes at the back. You can then treat the, the legs, for instance, if individuals have lymphedema, um, and, so, uh, and even want to reduce the circumference of, of the leg area as well. So it's very quick and easy, painless, and they can get about their daily activities very quickly. So you say they can have 25 beats, it's safe enough to use back to back. Yeah, we've had a patient that's been on it for yeah. the whole year. So, uh, very, very safe. Yeah. Um, and it also treats cellulite as well, doesn't it? So how does it treat the appearance of cellulite? Exactly through the same functions that we talked about. Yeah. So cellulite is slightly different because that's the end product of years of, let's say, malfunction. Okay, in that area. And with cellulite, you've got septi, which can be very, very tight, so that accounts for the dimpling that you see on the surface of the skin. And I think that obviously reduction of those fat cells obviously helps. And that photochemical reaction on the surface of the skin, what it does is that it has mild stimulation of collagen, so improvement in dermal thickness as well. So this is where the FDA approval for Akonia has with the use of emerald laser for cellulite, I think those two factors account for the, the, the positive effects that they have. In clinical practice, treating cellulite is not as simple as that. Um, I would put emerald as an adjuvant, adjuvant treatment. Um, so we use emerald laser and I may dissect those bands uh, with subcision and then use the emerald laser afterwards. Um, and that's another very, well, let's say great use of emerald laser is recovery from other surgeries. Yeah. So invasive surgeries, uh, the emerald laser obviously reduces um, that sort of inflammation. That's part of the protocol. Exactly, enhances the yeah. yeah. Amazing. And then Nima, um, how and why does emerald laser have positive, positive effects on our cells? I think we've just spoken a lot about that. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, ultimately, Perfect. optimizing cellular function, again with the fat cells, the reason we gain weight is not necessarily that we're gaining more fat cells, it's the fat cells that we have are increasing in size. And when they're increasing in size, they give out you know, not the correct signals, they give out inflammation, etc. So what does the emerald laser do? Again, it shrinks the fat cells, optimizes those fat cells, so they're giving the correct signals to other fat cells elsewhere in the body. Um, as we said, like it also helps with 
skin cells as well by improving, yeah, yeah. improving, yeah, improving uh, collagen reprofiling. Um, and it also helps with, and this is where NAD comes into it as well, when we optimize our cellular function, all the treatments we do as medical professionals, for example, your radio frequency microneedling, etc., the result will be better. Why? Because you're getting better repair because your cells are more optimized, they're less inflamed. So there is that knock-on effect uh, yeah. with the aesthetic treatments that we provide. Yeah, and probably like just a, well, one of the hallmarks we didn't speak about at the start is yeah, mitochondrial yeah. dysfunction. Yeah. Like that is one of the 12 hallmarks of aging, mitochondrial dysfunction. So the emerald is directly treating a hallmark of aging and anything that you are doing to improve mitochondrial function will improve the health of the whole cell because you mitochondria um, are literally powering the cell. So if they are not functioning correctly and not got the energy for all the cellular processes, but also um, mitochondria that aren't functioning properly, actually uh, uh, kind of think of it as like a power station that should be decommissioned. Um, and it's given off loads of like, you know, toxic, toxic waste and free radicals and things <laughs> that are then creating more damage. So anything you're doing to re, you know, regenerate that is beneficial and that is what that laser is doing yeah yeah and i think it's um important with this is not to have a reliance on pharmaceuticals uh, that are prescribed to reduce inflammation because that interrupt that that actually results in mitochondria yeah um so supplements we need to think about supplements that obviously help with mitochondrial dysfunction as well as the emerald laser um, which helps uh, one of the pathways, one of the steps within the electron transfer chain. Aconia uh, probably the only, well, actually are the only company in the world um, that take advantage of low-level laser in a pulse form, which is highly effective. Um, and also, it's not just the emerald laser, it's also the EVRR, with the use of red and violet light. So you can really upregulate that whole electron transfer chain. And that equates to better mitochondrial function and increased ATP. So you can have a complete solution. So now I'll go as far as saying that if clinics are bringing in the emerald laser, they should really be bringing in the EVRL at the same time. Yeah. So you've got three separate wavelengths that are, it almost gives you a complete solution um, to improve mitochondrial function. And then I know we've touched base quite a bit on ATP, um, but new LC, does it have a, a positive effect on our metabolic rate as well? Absolutely, of course it does. You know, again, what is ATP? It's anything triphosphate. It's the energy currency that you know basically provides energy for every single one of our cellular processes. And with the emerald laser, the research that they've done is that it increases ATP by around 400% per session. Yeah. Find me a fat reduction device that can do that, you know, or generally any other device. It's which which doesn't cause you pain, which doesn't cause you dysfunction, um, you know, any issues. Um, so yeah, of course it's going to help with metabolic rate and metabolic health. Yeah. Basically. And what about our sleep as well? Does that have a positive effect on our sleep too? Yeah. Have you noticed that with your patients? Definitely. Some of them say to me after the first or second. <laughs> yeah. Some of the patients, not every patient, because a lot of patients sleep well, but you will get probably around 30-40% of patients that will say I slept really well last night and that's even after their first session. So we combine the emerald with the cryotherapy so I don't know whether it's the emerald laser or the cryotherapy that's actually aiding in the restful night sleep but it mm. could well be both um, so yeah we get the same. And then what about hormonal issues as well? How does someone help with that? Yeah so like we talked about obviously fat is, is an organ yeah. um, and obviously uh, regulated Hormones is not as simple as one sentence, but um, uh, leaner, meaner fat cells can have better hormonal yeah. uh, or impact on hormonal function um, than if it's larger and more sluggish. Do you find it helps with going through the menopause? Um, I don't think I have enough data set for that. Um, but, but theoretically, if you think about it, there's these, uh, there's these estrogen receptors on the mitochondria, right? Yeah. yeah. That when they bind, um, it allows the mitochondria to be recycled, it, you know, it upregulates these mitochondria. And the, way, the word I use, it supercharges the mitochondria. So as you go through that menopause journey when estrogen is declining, you're not getting that binding of the estrogen to those receptors. So again, the mitochondrial function goes down. So again, what the emerald laser does, it targets that cytochrome 
see oxidase, which is a rate limiting state when it comes to the production of that ATP. Mm -hmm. So yes, in terms of energy increase, of course, it's going to help. Yeah. Um, in regards to um, all of the other symptoms, I can't comment, but um, yeah. And energy and brain fog are two of the most common yeah. symptoms, and they've now been directly linked to poor mitochondrial function. In in, yeah, yeah, because of the change in hormones, where, as Nima said, these these receptors have like had all this estrogen and it's gone, and they're like, oh, and then the dysfunction happens, and it's it's you know if you look at some of the symptoms of menopause, they're very very similar to the symptoms of aging, you know, lack of energy, fatigue, loss of stamina. Um, you know, feeling that brain fog, mental decline, um, and, and yeah, so you do, you do see improvements to those symptoms if you improve mitochondrial function. I think one important thing to remember, which I think both of you guys will agree with, is that when a patient comes to see you and maybe I'm um, feeling tired, feeling sluggish, um, this is a cycle of mitochondrial dysfunction mm -hmm. where you are aggregating inefficient uh, mitochondria within your cells. And there's, when we talk about, I was uh, talking just when I came in about um, intermittent fasting and how that's supposed to stimulate obviously um, more mitochondria. But if your mitochondria are not efficient, you're not going to get any benefit from that. And you see uh, data now, um, speaking to some of the manufacturers of these wallace uh, rings and whoops <laughs> and I was um, speaking to some of the research team there, and they were asking me like looking at the data that there's certain individuals that have do intermittent fasting and they're more well rested uh, and some it goes completely the other way and I think that explanation of that cycle of inefficient aggregation of mitochondria um, contributes to that yeah. so you, even before you start to do something like this, actually you need you need some NAD, you need um, low level uh, laser therapy before you even start those functions. I think most of the studies, correct me if I'm wrong, on um, intermittent fasting have been done on men mm. and not women, so yeah, you can't really say it's the same for both sectors. Yeah, yeah, no, there are some key differences. Yeah, that's a good point actually. You'll have retreats for well, yeah, you, maybe you need to prime them first, <laughs> prime them first um, with low-level laser therapy, and then start these things. Perfect. So I've asked you guys quite a lot of questions now, and uh, I'm going to move on to the <laughs> grill me. Yeah. Um, so, what is NAD plus responsible for in the body? Yeah. Okay. So you, you, when you just mentioned NAD, so NAD for anyone that hasn't heard of it before, um, is an abbreviation, and it stands for nicotinamide adenine diphosphate. Um, you'll often see it called NAD or NAD+. These two things are used interchangeably. But essentially, it's, it's a natural molecule that's found in every single cell in your body. So it's not something that's artificially added. It's something that we generally have already. Um, and it's very important for hundreds of different reactions in the cells. Um, but it's most important, almost famous, I guess, for two things. The first thing is for energy production in these mitochondria that we've just been talking about. So this electron transport chain, this, this part of our mitochondria that's like the factory process that's creating the energy from the food we eat, NAD is a direct part of that process. So if you didn't have any NAD, that would not happen. We'd, we'd literally be dead in 30 seconds because it's so critical for that, um, that respiration process in our cells. The second thing that NAD is really uh, famous for is actually for repair. So remember earlier I said that we've got this army of repair proteins that's sort of going around our bodies constantly making sure that any damage is, is, is fixed, whether that's DNA damage or you know, protein damage, anything. A lot of these enzymes and these pathways are powered by NAD. So NAD literally acts as the fuel to drive them. So as a general rule of thumb, if you've got high NAD, you'll have lots of energy, good mitochondrial function, and you'll be getting lots of repair. If NAD goes down, you get less um, energy production and also less repair. So is this something new that we've just found out or is this a new breakthrough? So NAD itself has been known for hundreds of years. Yeah. We've known for a very long time since the discovery of the Krebs cycle, which is the, the cycle that produces energy through respiration, that NAD was a thing. Um, the bit that is more new is the link with repair. 
Yeah. So it's probably around the last decade, certainly since I started getting involved in the longevity industry, that NAD suddenly came up as this, this molecule that seemed to be powering a lot of repair processes. Um, and that's why it's it suddenly you know came out of nowhere, um, especially to do with, with aging. Um, because what we know is that NAD seems to decline as many things do with age. Um, and this decline is actually quite significant. Um, when it's so been, say at what age does it begin? It actually begins from birth. So there's, okay. there's studies so done there's um, looking animals. at various tissues, so human tissues, looking at skin, brain, liver, um, parts of our immune system, and it shows that it, it roughly halves every 20 years, mm -hmm. and that's from birth. So even by the time you're 20, you've lost half your NAD. By the time you're 40, that halves again, and you get this real steep decline. Um, now, it's, it's an age-related decline, but lifestyle also plays a big role. So in some people, it will decline quicker than others, and that's very much determined by essentially how damaging your lifestyle is. Yeah. So if you are like smoking, um, drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, um, eating an you know, inflammatory diet, uh, sunburn, those are the top things that will massively deplete NAD and, and cause it to decline. So what quicker. happens if you don't replace it? If you don't replace it, you get a lot of damage yeah. in the cells. So basically, you are, you know, you are yeah, eventually. <laughs> um, but you, you know, the, the mitochondria, like you just said, the mitochondria yeah. are so important. That energy production pathway is so important that as you are depleting your NAD levels, energy is not being created efficiently in the cell. The mitochondria are not working efficiently. You're getting all of that toxic junk coming out the mitochondria factory. You also get an ability of damage because our cells don't have the NAD to power those repair processes. So ultimately, this decline in NAD coincides with an increase in the hallmarks of aging, uh, an increase in all of these 12 key things that are going wrong in our cells. NAD seems to drive it, well, the decline in NAD. So then how can supplementation help that? So yeah, so a big, a big sort of, when this was all discovered, when it was kind of realized that, okay, we've got this molecule and when it goes down, it drives aging. Um, what happens if we just don't let it decline? Can we top it up? Mm -hmm. um, and this is where this idea of repl replenishing NAD came in. Um, and supplements have become a, a very popular way to do this. Yeah. There are other ways you can do it, but um, supplements have become a popular way. And essentially, all of the data demonstrated that if you could restore NAD levels, then you could actually slow down the, the rate at which those hallmarks of aging were happening. So you were looking at, you know, first of all, looking at experiments in cells by topping up the NAD. These were literally going from old cells that had lots of inflammation, lots of reactive oxygen species, um, damage, um, DNA damage to top the NAD up and they look like new cells again, like as clear as day like that. Um, and now there's hundreds of research papers in animals and then in humans now, all the human clinical studies that are coming out to show how it can improve what we call our, is our health span. So the proportion of our lives that we actually live healthily rather than suffering from chronic age-related diseases. So my next question was going to be who can benefit from it, but I'm assuming everyone. <laughs> everyone, is, yeah. yeah. So I out. always, when anyone asks this question, I always like have, feel like I go, yeah, NAD is good for everything. And everyone goes, oh, can it help this? Can it help that? And you're like, yes, it can. Yes, it can. And it almost sounds too good to be true. But actually, when you go back to the biology and think of the physiology of it, it is absolutely critical for normal cellular function, for the mitochondria, for the energy, for the repair. Therefore, when it goes down, it, it literally causes problems across the whole body, everything from inflammation to senescent cells, to you know, lack of energy, brain fog, everything. NAD can be implicated in it. Yeah. So that means equally when you restore NAD, you get a benefit across the whole body. So you see you know, benefits that range from improvements in energy all the way to things like um, you know, just your hair growing faster <laughs> um, because it's so important for just normal cellular function. I say, so you'd recommend it to all ages as well then? Yeah, so I always say you know, this is not something you're artificially adding. This is something that's naturally in yeah. your body and your body is used to having high levels. It's not used to having low levels now that we're living much longer. Um, you know, as far as our biology is concerned, having low NAD has never been a thing until the last 200 years where all of a sudden we're living until, you know, well past what our average life expectancy used to be. And then what are the five top noticeable differences or benefits that you can say if you're going to be obviously supplementing? Um, and boosting NAD plus? 
So the, the top benefits by a mile are, are not surprising. They're the things to do with energy. Um, so actual physical energy, so that, you know, like, you know, f feeling like you just, you don't feel sluggish and drained. Um, it's very closely followed by mental energy. So um, a reduction in brain fog. In fact, by far, the people that we notice these benefits in the most are menopausal women and perimenopausal women. And these people usually notice results like very quickly within um, a week. Um, for other people, it's more subtle. And I say, you know, the general rule is that the more unhealthy a person is to begin with, generally they will notice a difference straight away because they've just got mass mitochondrial dysfunction and NAD is directly helping with that. Um, so the other thing we haven't mentioned is sleep. NAD is very, very important for regulating um, what's known as the circadian rhythm, which is your 24 hour sleep wake cycle. This, you know, continually goes throughout the day. Um, as your NAD levels go down, this, um, it actually impacts the circadian rhythm. It makes it not as strong. Um, and this is one of the reasons why, as you get older, your sleep becomes more disrupted. Um, and there's been studies showing that when you elevate NAD, it strengthens the circadian rhythm and um, improves sleep. So sleep is another huge area. Um, more long term, um, you know, hair, skin, nails. Um, this is improvement in quality, growth, um, hair. We see reversal of grey hair. Um, so they are more long term. They are more like looking three months because your, you know, your body, these things aren't important yeah. to your body. So if you can get your cellular health in good, in, yeah. in good order, then the rest will follow. Amazing. And then what does Nutrita Time Plus do then? So Nutrito Time Plus is the supplement that I developed um, to directly boost NAD. The, you know, there are a lot of NAD boosting products and methods out there on the market now. I know we were discussing a few earlier, um, but one of the main flaws with a lot of them is that they ignore the reason why NAD declines. So usually when something's declining in the body, it's going down for a reason. Um, we now know the reason NAD declines is because the pathway in our cells that actually makes and recycles NAD continuously when we're young declines with age. Um, and that's really important because NAD is not something we get from the diet. Our cells naturally make their own NAD, which makes total sense because it's so important. We would never want to rely on a critical molecule like that coming from your diet in case you didn't get any food. So the pathway that naturally makes it in our bodies declines with age. So our supplement actually switches that back on. Okay. Um, and we've done a full, you know, human double blind clinical trial to demonstrate that it actually does that. And we're the only supplement on the market with a published um, clinical trial to show it does actually fix. If the earlier you start it, the better your results, would you say? I would always say with anything like NAD, you know, prevention's better than cure. Yeah. You know, you, you really don't want to be waiting until it's massively depleted and then go, oh, I better top it up to then try and get rid of some of the damage that's already accumulated. If you can just keep your repair processes switched on, and not let the damage accumulate in the first place, which is essentially yeah. what NAD is doing, it's preventing the damage, then that's always gonna be better than trying to fix yeah. afterwards. Amazing, and what's the science behind biological aging? So, so biological age is, again, something that is becoming really, really exciting in the area because it's a, it's a way that we can measure the rate at which you're aging on the inside. So we can now literally take a blood test and you know look at, um, there's different ways of doing it, but because we explained epigenetics earlier, we'll go with that explanation. You remember when I said that, you know, cells from younger people will have a different pattern of genes switched on of cells from older people? Well, we could take a sample of cells and look at the pattern and go, okay, according to the pattern, you are biologically X. Um, and at that point, some people are like, oh God, that is like 10 years older than I actually am. And some people are like, oh, that's great because it's 10 years younger than I actually am. And um, this discrepancy that we seem to have between our biological age and our chronological age is um, basically very exciting within the longevity field because what it demonstrated to us is that aging is not fixed because for a long time it was argued you could not slow the aging process because it was this program thing that once it had started, you couldn't stop it. But this discrepancy between everyone's biological age and chronological age shows it's not fixed because otherwise they always should be identical and they're not. So that shows that there's something going on in our cells that's speeding up aging or slowing it down. And then if we can find out what that is and act upon it, we can reverse aging. And we now know what's going on in our cells is those 12 hallmarks of aging. Yeah.
I was going to say, so you, you can reverse your biological age. You can. That's a good thing because a lot of people panic when they're like, do I, know, do I really want to test it? Do I want to know? Like in case it's bad and it's like, yeah, but like you can actually do something about it. Um, and actually your biological age is a much better predictor of future health than your chronological age. So, um, yeah. And you've done tests with Machida to show that? Yeah, so we, we're actually done. So in that clinical trial, we wanted to actually, you know, not only measure lots of different biomarkers of aging, like inflammation and mitochondrial mm -hmm. function, things like that. We wanted a, like an actual measure of, is this actually impacting biological age? And um, so we found that in 28 days of the participants using the supplement, it reversed biological age by 1.26 years. So it's, yeah, again, another, it's a first supplement clinically proven to, to reverse the biological age. So would you recommend also using NAD plus topically or NAD plus IV? Um, so the issue with both of these approaches is NAD is a very large and it's a very unstable molecule. Mm -hmm. So first of all, let's just look topically. Um, trying to formulate with NAD, I mean, you can put it in a formulation, but by the time it's in the consumer's hands, it will be degraded. Okay. Because it, the, the, if you just looking at the chemistry of an NAD molecule, it's designed to flip between different states in this electron transport chain. So it's naturally an unstable molecule. So it just doesn't survive outside the cells and outside the body. So this is a huge problem with, you know, you can't just put NAD in a, in a pill and, yeah, and swallow it. It just doesn't work like that. Um, IVs, the, the issue with those is that, yes, they get it into the blood, but NAD doesn't actually do anything in the blood. In fact, it's not normal for huge okay. amounts of NAD to be in the blood. Um, NAD has to be inside of the cells. there are some on the market. Oh, there, there's yeah. a lot, yeah. yeah it's been a lot of side effects. They're, then they're not pleasant. You know, a lot of people go, oh, yeah, you know, yeah people have terrible experiences yeah, happening. I've had them years ago. And the reason for that is you suddenly put in a huge amount of a molecule into the blood that's never naturally found in the blood. Yeah. So the body's all of a sudden like, oh my goodness, we've got to break it down and, and try and get rid of it. So yes, you put an NAD into the body, but it's not actually going to where it yeah, needs to go. Um, because it's too big to cross into the cells and that's why your cells naturally make it inside because that's where it's needed, that's where the mitochondria are, that's where the DNA is. Um, it's all about targeting. Yeah, exactly that. Amazing. And then what should we all avoid when buying supplements? Oh God, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> uh, right, supplements. Um, yeah, so supplements are a, a funny old area and when I left my, my job in drug development to start a supplement company, I got so many raised eyebrows because everyone was just like, oh my goodness, supplements don't work. Why would you, you know, waste a good career to start a snake oil supplement? Um, but actually, supplements and the ingredients that go into supplements can be very, very powerful if they are used in the right versions and they're used in the right concentrations. Um, so I think one thing to always look out for is, first of all, has this actual product been tested <laughs> in an actual human? <laughs> um, because lots of products haven't. The second thing is um, the ingredients that are in there, are they actually absorbed by the body? So a classic example that we've just said is NAD. You go on Amazon, there's people putting pure NAD in a pill, absolutely pointless. Um, so really look at, do a little bit of research about what you're trying to boost. Um, the third thing is I think people, when they're you know, looking for supplements is why are you taking them? Like, do you need this? Um, so a lot of people are blindly taking all sorts of different supplements, not really knowing if they're deficient in them. You know, people are taking B12 and this and that, and it's like, but you may not need that. Like, Nima might need it, but I might not need it. You might need something else. We don't know unless we do some blood testing. The one thing with NAD where it's different is we know it universally declines in everyone. Um, so it's kind of like a safe bet. One size fits all. Yeah. Um, and then where do you see the role of supplementation and nutri is it new nutraceuticals and aesthetics and well-being moving forward? So I, again, I just think it's this movement into how do we look at targeting everything, not from the outside, but from the inside. You know, naturally taking something like an oral supplement is going to be targeting these problems from the inside. And we know everything starts at the cellular level. So anything you can be doing in terms of supplementation to improve cellular function is only going to improve the, you know, the effects of all the treatments. With NAD, a key thing is, you know, you, know, you, you were mentioning, get, your, get yourselves in good health, prime the body to be ready to respond to whatever treatments are going to happen. 
um, when it comes to things like um, skin health and skin treatments, a lot of them naturally induce quite yeah. a bit of stress, you know, microneedling, um, lasers that do induce yeah. damage, they are relying on having um, some sort of um, repair yeah. pathway switched on. Yeah. But if that repair pathway doesn't have any to fuel it, you're stressing stress out. So anything you can do at the cellular level to improve cellular function is only going to help everything else. So, so would you say to see some kind of clinic that this would help them? If they take it, this would help their wound healing and treatment? And, and yeah, anything. Yeah. Like I think that's the key takeaway. Everything starts at the cells. If your cells are not functioning, whether that is inflammation, whether that's recovery time, whether that's treatment outcome, none of them are going to be as good as they are in young cells, young functioning yeah. cells. And we know the regenerative capacity of the skin declines with age. So, you know, I think looking at something like boosting NAD levels, looking at using the laser to optimize mitochondrial function, all of those things are like, they're like setting the, you know, it's like if you, if you were going to plant some plants, you'd want the soil to be all good yeah. before you just chuck the seeds in. It's so kind of, of yeah, exactly that. And then are there any side effects of taking taking supplements? So in terms of NAD, as I mentioned, it's naturally found at higher levels in our body anyway. So some people go, oh God, can I boost it too high? You, you, can't, you can't really get to that level. Um, so there's so no, no known side effects. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's, that's the end of our question. Thank you. Thank you.